Father, in the name of Jesus, we celebrate the Christ of God. We are so grateful for your love expressed in your giving, this great gift that keeps on giving. We bless you today, Lord Jesus, that you are the light of the world. And the world is so dark, darkness covers the earth and gross darkness of people but you've come with the light you are the light of the world and you've made us the light of the world we give you the praise the honor and the glory Lord as we turn to your word reveal your plans and purposes as we study your word and we would be careful to give you the praise the honor and the glory we pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated. Welcome. Merry Christmas to every one of you. We welcome all our online viewers. God richly bless you. And we welcome Ma Ann there with her family at home and joining us in the service. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to share with you on the Christmas message 2020, the glory shone round about the glory shone round about this year we have themed it the year of the manifestation of the glory the kingdom glory hallelujah and it's been dark it's been a dark year and uh, thank you Christelle for sharing so powerfully in that, praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand. It was not an easy time when Jesus was born. Uh, think about it as we celebrate the birth of Jesus. I think in the Western world we have taken so much of the Western world that we kind of focus on circumstances to see God. But darkness covers the earth, gross darkness the people. Isaiah 60, we've been focusing on that. There's no circumstance there that actually you can read into that God is moving the powerfulest or the most powerful. But there the light begins to shine. The darker the night, the brighter the light. And the glory of God in the scriptures is directly linked to a time when there's great trouble and suffering. And our hearts go out for our families that have experienced loss, loss of loved ones. There's families where there's a chair that is empty and some families, two chairs that are empty. Friends, there are churches that have no more pastors. And so it's a dark, dark time. In my 72 years, I've never known or even read of a dark time like this. My sister in London, my daughter in London, has been going through a time of isolation. My son-in-law has just come through. So none of us have been exempt from the experience of the effect of this COVID-19. And this is a time when we need to zero in into God more than we've ever, ever zeroed in. And uh, we, don't ha we must never s succumb to drawing back in the time of darkness. It's time to serve the Lord more than we've ever served him. Praise the Lord Jesus. But think about Joseph and Mary. Think about Mary's parents, that she was just a teenager, could have been 14, 15 years old, and yes, she's going to become pregnant. How dark a situation is that? For you that have daughters, 13, 14, 15, how would you handle that, a daughter falling pregnant. Think about her journey on a donkey 
on her ninth month that when she got to Bethlehem, she couldn't wait. It was time to give birth. It was quite a journey that they took. And uh, think about the inn that there was no room for her to give birth. And that the only place that she could give birth was in a manger. Uh, I mean, my friends, that was real dark. But isn't it amazing? As dark as dark that that could be, that's when the brightest light came forth. So never ever allow your circumstance and your situations to determine the outcome of your life. Allow your faith in God to determine the outcome of your life. Start my time there now. I'm going to share the word. I want to read to you from Luke chapter 2, reading from verse 8. And the title is, The Glory Shone Round About. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. The glory of the Lord shone round about them. That means there was no place where there was darkness in round about them. And I believe this Christmas God wants that for you and I. The glory of the Lord shone round about them. And then they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, the armies of heaven now praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, good will towards men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us, let us now go. See the urgency. Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass which the Lord had made known unto us. And they came with haste. Take note again. Now and haste. They came with haste. And found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Bearing in mind this is a teenager that was not married, was just was still going to be engaged. My God. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these sayings and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. Praise the Lord for his word. I was blessed by a tweet by Pastor Samuel Rodriguez. And this is what the tweet said. Christmas is about lights, trees, and gifts. Jesus is the light, died on a tree, and gave us the gift of salvation. Christmas is about lights, trees, and gifts. 
As I meditated on the birth of our blessed Lord and Savior, a thought came to me that Jesus Christ came from eternity into time and split our time, split our calendar from BC to AD, separating it from the old covenant, separating the old covenant from the new covenant, separating the old creation, the old man, from the new creation, separating law from grace, separating light from darkness. Right in the beginning of the Bible, in Genesis 1 verse 3, we look at the chaotic situation that the earth was. The earth was without form and void and empty. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was moving upon the face of the waters. And that was a picture of each one of our lives before we were saved. It was a picture of the world in darkness and gross darkness of, of the people, upon the people, before Jesus Christ came. And God said in verse 3, let there be light. You see, the glory of God is the light of God. The light of God is the life of God. And the light of God drives the darkness away that you are able to see. Jesus Christ is the brightness of the glory of God. And he's the express image of his person. That's in Hebrews 1, 3. The Apostle Paul said, the glorious gospel, wow, meaning the gospel of Christ is full of glory. It's full of light. The psalmist said, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. The glorious gospel shines in our hearts and the knowledge of Christ is filled with the glory of God which is the image of God in the face of Jesus Christ and that shines in our hearts for the purpose that we would give out the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. We get to that in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 from verse 3 to verse 6. Jesus prayed to the Father in John 17, 5, that the Father will, would give him the glory that he had with the Father before the world began. Can you see it? And now, Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory. So you see, the glory has to do with God. Glorify me with your own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. You seeing that Jesus says, with thine own self, with the glory. The glory of God is the intrinsic value of God, who God is, emanating out of God as light. The glory of God is the weighty goodness of God. That's the glory of God. He's so weighty in goodness. The glory of God is the light of God. It's the presence of God. The glory of God is the goodness of God and the glory of God is the light of God. It's a weighty presence of God. And that light is God himself. Give him a big hand. Now, the, in John 17, the prayer that Jesus prayed, he prayed and he said to the Father, he has given us that glory, that we may be one with the Father, one with the Son, and one with one another. Look at it in John 17, 22 and 23. Because I want you to get the picture of what was the purpose of the glory shining round about at the birth of Jesus. 
He says, and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. Wow. The intrinsic value of God, who God really is, is given to humanity that they may be one even as we are one. And this is what this glory will do. I in them, thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them as thou hast loved me. Back to the text that I've read to you. Let's look at this light of God on this Christmas Eve 2020. The light of God, the glory of God at the Annunciation. The glory of God was shining when the angel announced to the shepherds. I believe there is a light spiritually every time the gospel of Christ is preached. And your eyes need to be open, enlightened, for you to see the light of life. This, the word was made flesh, and, and, and Jesus is our life, but he's the light of men. And the glory is the weighty presence of God, the great goodness of God. Many Bible scholars say the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament was actually the pre-incarnate Christ. It actually says the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. Now, the type of people that God sent the angel of the Lord to were ordinary shepherds. At this time, in the East, the shepherds was the most meanest, meanest jobs you could do. It, it wasn't a high-profile job. And so God comes to the ordinary people with the gospel. I think about where I was when the gospel came to me. Where were you when the gospel came to you? And the light shone round about and we were all born again. So we're looking at the light, the glory of God that actually came out of the message of Christ. And every time Christ is preached, those words are heavily laden with the glory of God. Look at the angel's message to the shepherds. You see, they were afraid. They had never seen, they had never experienced something like this. And they were afraid. And the message to the shepherds is, fear not. Very interesting. Some people say there's at least 365 fear nots in the Bible. There isn't any command of God in the Bible more than fear not. God continually says to us, fear not. And so I don't know what you are facing. This year may have been dark for you. You may have lost loved ones. You may have lost business. You may have lost a job. God is coming to you today as I am speaking to you. And God is saying, fear not. There's a fear not for every day in the Bible. So he says, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which is for all people. So no one should ever be gripped by fear because we have the gospel of Christ, the good news, glad tidings of great joy. You cannot mix joy and fear together. When somebody has fear, it's usually depression. But joy means you've got faith in the word of God. And the light of God drives out all fear. Fear is torment, my friend. And he that fears is not made perfect in love. You see, the very fact that God says, fear not. And he says, perfect love drives, drives out fear. The antidote for fear is the love of God. And there's all types of fear. 
There is fear of death, fear of running out, fear of COVID-19. And God is saying to us, fear not on this Christmas day. He's not saying we must be careless. He's not saying you mustn't wear a mask. But he's saying you must do all that, but don't be gripped with fear because fear will attract COVID-19 to you. But faith will drive COVID-19 away from you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Fear not for behold, I bring you good, glad tidings of good things, of great joy, which shall be to all people. All means you are included there. There's a good message for you today. And it it's, it's brings you great joy. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Would you ever think you'll find a a Savior in a stable, in a manger? Be careful of your expectations that God's gifts sometimes come in packages that you least expect. Stable in a manger. But this was wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. I had an opportunity to look at that swaddling clothes because when I read that again, that seemed to jump out of the Bible, wrapped in swaddling clothes. Now, there's a number of um, thoughts about that, but swaddling clothes was for travelers in the desert. They used to wear these swaddling clothes. It was... A fine cloth that they will wrap around their bodies and then put their clothing over that. Uh, because in the, during this journey, some people may die. And when somebody would die, they would take the swaddling clothes and wrap up that body for burial. And here Jesus is wrapped as a baby for death he was born to die for your sins and my sins wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger number three suddenly a multitude of the heavenly host began to sing glory in the highest on earth peace the word peace in the Hebrew is, is it means wholeness Completeness, nothing missing, nothing broken. Also in the Greek, it means prosperity. Glory in the highs. That word glory means praise be unto God. All honor, praise, and glory be unto God. But on earth, the light is come to make us whole. The light is come to make you complete. The light has come to make you satisfied in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Completeness. A light has come to prosper you. And goodwill towards men. I looked at that word goodwill. It means pleasure to all men. Delight. And it means contentment. It's amazing religious circles. They think of spirituality. You must be struggling you, you must be downhearted. You must be gloomy. But very interesting, Jesus really was not like that. The picture that life is hard to be a Christian is not the picture of the Bible. The first miracle that Jesus performed was at a wedding, a place where there's celebration. Isn't it interesting? He turned the water into wine. That's amazing. It seems like Jesus loved people to be happy. You hearing that, Moan? Jesus loves people to laugh, to dance. People dance at a wedding. And Jesus loves to see you smiling and laughing like Moan. I don't know what my life would be if I never married a Moan. I think I would be so sad and gloomy, but a happiness and a joy rubs off on me. Let's give Mayan a big hand. 
goodwill towards men, pleasure, delight, contentment. That's what Christmas is all about. We, we're sorry about the season where we can't get together as family and loved ones. But usually Christmas has to do with family coming together, people going on holiday, people having a wonderful time together. But I want to encourage you, let us celebrate Christ in the season, hallelujah, and we still can be filled with joy. Now look at the shepherd's response, because we can learn some things here, and as we see the darkness of our world, this should be our response to this message on this Christmas day. Uh, they responded, they came with haste, and they did it immediately. I believe God wants us to deal with the hesitancy in our lives. He that hesitates gets lost. I made up my mind a long time ago that when the Spirit of God prompts me to do something, I don't first consult with someone else to find out what they think about it. When the Spirit of God prompts me to give something, I don't go and speak to Ma Ann. In fact, many times Ma ends listening to the, me preaching and then afterwards she'll say, who did you sow that to? Like on Sunday, I said, I left home and I made a transfer of 6,000 rand. She said, who did you give that 6,000 rand to? I said, no, Anne, I do that every service to sow into the service. Not that she stops me from sowing, but I don't go and confide in a committee what I got to do. God doesn't work like that. God works with your heart. And you've got to learn to be prompt to be quick to obey God in the name of Jesus. Let us read it again. And it verse from verse 15. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem. You see, friends, they were looking after livestock. They most probably either were hired by somebody who's wealthy, or maybe it was their own livestock. But they responded to God in a greater way than their commitment to man. They responded to God in a greater way than their commitment to money. You're going to have to learn to put God first in your responses. This is what Christmas is all about. So you can experience the glory of the Lord. Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass. Which the Lord has made known unto us. What do you know, friends, that has already come to pass? that the Lord has made known unto you. Have you made haste to do the word of God? Have you made up your mind that the darker this world becomes, the more you're going to zero into God, the more you're going to serve God, the more you're going to be faithful to God. This is not the time to draw back from serving God. This is a time to serve God with all our hearts like we've never done before. This is not a time to withdraw. The Bible says God is not pleased with anyone who withdraws because God never withdrew his son. Imagine if God hesitated. Imagine if God withdrew Jesus from being born. Where would we all be? And they came with haste. You know, I was thinking about that, how they came with haste. And I thought about when this, uh, Israel was in Egypt and, and God spoke to Moses to tell them they must kill the lamb. But he says that night when they were coming out of Egypt, they must put their shoes on and they must eat it with haste. It's the Lord's Passover. You see, friends, when God is going to do something we looked at the speed of light. And if you hesitate, you'll be sitting at the bus stop and smelling diesel all your life. But you've got to make sure that you are in the driver's seat right next to the driver. 
Alabasto Labanda. I'm going to make haste. Are you going to make haste, church? And they found, you, when, you, when you make haste, when you do it now, and you make haste, you find. Because God says, if you search for me with all your heart, you will find me. They found Mary Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, look at their response. They made known abroad the same which was told them concerning the child. Don't hide your testimony. Don't hide what you know about Jesus. I tell you, friends, you don't know if that would be the last time you will have an opportunity to witness to somebody. And so use every opportunity as though it's the last day of their lives to tell them about the love of God. And they all that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. Now, in the last 15 minutes, let me share some truths with you. How do we apply this to our lives? Because celebrating Christmas without a personal application is not what God intended. I believe that there's a message in Christmas 2020 for every one of us. Number one, the glory is the glory of the word of God being made flesh. That when you make the word of God your lifestyle, and you do that by the Holy Spirit, you do that by the faith of God, that is when the glory of the Lord is revealed in your life to bring goodness into your life and to bring direction into your life and to bring life of God into all your affairs. In John 1.14, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. The same Word that in Genesis chapter 1 verse 3, before God created the moon, the sun, the stars, he said, let there be light. That word has light. The entrance of the word of God bringeth light. And the first thing that light will do will give understanding to the simple. The light of God gives you vision and you begin to get understanding for your life. The word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. And then we beheld his glory. Watch the order. We beheld his glory as the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And so, friends, we must understand that the glory of God is the Word made flesh. First of all, in Jesus' life, then in our lives, uh, because we are predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. We must make the word fleshed out in our lives. Number two, how was the word of God made flesh? And Christelle shared that. The angel, the messenger of God, because that's what an angel is called, a messenger of God, came to tell Mary, about what's going to happen. And she was afraid. And, and the messenger said, don't be afraid. Also, it's amazing. I'm saying to you, don't be afraid. Don't walk in fear. Walk in faith, my friend. Don't fear sickness and disease. Don't fear running out. Don't fear death. Even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the psalmist says, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me your rod and your staff to, to comfort me. And so she couldn't understand. She's a virgin. She says, how are these things going to be? Now she was not in unbelief when she asked that question. And the angel of the Lord explained to her that the Holy Ghost will come upon thee and, on, and that which is born of her will be the Son of God. And so even though it seems so impossible, so Christmas is telling us, don't focus on the impossible, focus on the impossible. The things that are impossible with man are possible with God. 
the birth of Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus are two of the greatest miracles that the world or science can even comprehend. How a virgin can give birth to as the Son of God. It is a great miracle. It's beyond human intelligence. You cannot compute that. And when God begins to move like that, it's very, very powerful. And I believe that in Christmas 2020, God is speaking to each one of you and to you online that God wants to do turn some things around in your life. Things that were impossible for you and for others will now become possible because the glory of God is shining round about your life. Hallelujah. And Mary made an amazing statement. She says, let it be unto me according to thy word. And so it, she received the word. If you don't receive this word, that your pastor preaches, that God is saying to you, that he's bringing life to you, he's bringing his presence to you, he's bringing his goodness, he's turning things around for your life to work for good in spite of the devil trying to destroy you, God is going to use it as stepping stones to glorify his name in your life. You're going to have to say amen. That's how you receive it from your spirit. You say, so be it. I receive a miracle from God on Christmas 2020. Hallelujah. And then number three I shared with you, Jesus performed was to turn the natural into supernatural the water was natural but there was a supernatural stirring of the water and it became wine and the time period was compressed you know how long it takes to grow a vineyard to crush grapes and to make wine you know but in a journey of obedience they saw the water in the jars being stirred and there was a turning around that when they served the governor of the feast uh, they, he tasted and he said my this wine is better than the first wine and so the governor of the feast didn't know but the bible says the servants knew because Mary had prepared them for a miracle and the message of Mary said Whatever he says to you, just do it. That's a message I'm giving to you to walk in the supernatural and to experience the goodness of the Lord. Let your ears hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying unto you. And whatever the Lord is saying, just do it. And you'll see the waters being stirred and a miracle take place in your life that the others may not know, but you will know. Just do it. Hallelujah. It's the breeding ground of miracles. The Word of God, number four, produces after its kind supernaturally. The Word of God is God. John says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You must understand, friends, that this book is a record of what God says, but is also a record of the failures and the successes of men. You need to be able to study this Word and dig deep into it that you find out what God says and you live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And as you fellowship with the word, you are actually fellowshipping with God. You handle the Bible as something very sacred that you live by every day of your life. The word of God is God. The word of God must be planted in your heart. As Christelle said, your heart is your womb. Your heart is a production center of your life. So you got to receive the word through mixing your hearing with faith. 
So as you hear this word being preached to you today, that the birth of Jesus is also speaking to you about you being born again as a child of God. The birth of Jesus is also speaking to you about every promise being born in your life and being manifested in your life. And you're going to have to receive the engrafted word of God. Hallelujah. Number five, the word of God must be engrafted in your life. If you start studied horticulture, you would have known the process of how a branch of one tree can be grafted into another tree and that branch begins to grow off that tree and the life of that tree begins to feed into that branch and so that branch can bear fruit and that is what the Bible is saying about the word of God. It must be become engrafted in you. In other words, the word of God must live in your heart and the roots of that word must go into your spirit and the tree of life, which is Jesus, must grow out of your life. And that's how the fruit is produced. The word of God, number five, must take root in your heart. You must know the word of God when you resist the devil. You must know the word of God when you resist COVID-19. You must know the word of God when you resist poverty. You must know the word of God when you resist all the packages of the devil. Don't be a yes man to everything that life throws at you. There are some packages you should say, wrong address, wrong name. Get to where you come from. And you don't receive those symptoms in your life and in your body or in your family's body. The word of God must be engrafted in your life. Then number six, Mary was pregnant with Jesus for nine months. And the word of God is, you're going to get pregnant with the word of God. The word of God will give you vision. Your vision is your hope, is your dream. And you're starting having uh, pictures of, of the Word of God in your life because the language of the Holy Spirit is vision and dreams. God communicates with vision and dreams. And that's why we're teaching you. Before you begin next year, you've got a few days left. You must write down your goals. You must begin to f- create a vision board for your life. So not only do you have the Word of God coming into you but you're taking outward pictures and you're forcibly implanting them into your imagination it was Einstein who said imagination is more powerful than knowledge you can know something and yet it doesn't come to pass but I guarantee you when you got a vision and that picture is clear in your mind nothing can stop it because in the end it will speak for itself in the mighty mighty name of Jesus you're going to have to get pregnant with the word of God Yonggi Cho was from the most poorest place he didn't even have a bicycle He didn't even have a desk in his room. And God called him to preach. And God gave him this picture about getting pregnant with the word of God. And he got pregnant with a bicycle. And he would tell the people, I'm pregnant with a bicycle. I'm pregnant with a desk. But my friend, as the years went into decades, he became the pastor of the world's largest church. When I went to Seoul, Korea, uh, at that time, the membership of that church, one church, was over 600,000 people. It was just an amazing thing to see it. But yet he started with a bicycle that he didn't have on the outside, but he got pregnant with it from the word of God so he could use it for the kingdom of God. I want to ask you, what promises are you pregnant with? Are you pregnant? Have you conceived the word of God? Is that word of God growing in your life? Can you see the vision of that word having been fulfilled in your life? My friend, you must do that. There's a part you got to play and God will do 
his part. Now, not only was Jesus, the word made flesh and, uh, and was born, but Mary and Joseph had to nurture this child. Very interesting, powerful uh, lessons here. God gives you something and it seems so small. And the Bible says, despise not the days of small beginnings. Every great thing started with something small. And so they nurtured Jesus and they brought him up to the place where he became the savior of the world. Don't think that it's one leap. My friend, it's taken me 44 years to get to where I am. But when I look back to where I came from, I tell you, man, I, if you had to show me then where I am today, I would have never been able to believe it. And so you start where you are and you work your way a step at a time and steps become mega leaps eventually. Number seven, we are born again by the word of God. 1 Peter 1.23, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God that abideth forever. Number eight, the word of God must also grow in the believer's heart. Not only for you to get saved, but for your family to be saved. For you to be healthy for you to be wealthy, for you to be a wise man, a wise woman of God, hallelujah, that your life is filled with testimonies of how the word of God um, grew in your heart. The word of God, number eight, must grow in the believer's heart. Your heart is God's garden. You are God's field. And God is placed men and women to preach to you. And it's Jesus' word that's being sown into you. So the field of God may be able to produce. In Acts chapter 12 and verse 24. But the word of God grew and multiplied. Can you see that? It didn't just stay the word in the Bible. It wasn't just the word that the preacher was talking about. It was the word of God growing in the hearts of people, but the word of God as seed started to multiply. Then Acts chapter 19 verse 20, so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. When this word starts growing mightily in you, no person can stop it. No devil can stop it. No circumstance can stop it. When you are in your calling and in your grace, you cannot be destroyed. You cannot die before your time when you are in your calling and in your grace. There is a preservation that will take place. Even though the enemy may come in like a flood, God will raise up a standard. So Jesus Christ has grown. And I draw this to a close has grown into a body and multiplied millions and billions of times as Christians. And this is what Abram experienced. Abram was an old man. He was 90, 99 and his wife was 70 and they still hadn't had a child. When he had an encounter with God, God took him out of his tent and said, look into the heavens. You see all the stars there? Count them, Abram. And if you can count them, that's how much seed I'm going to give you. Look at the sand, Abram, on the seashore. If you can count that seed of every grain of sand, if you can do that, that's how much seed I'm going to give you. And that is what God is saying to each one of us. He gives seed to the sower. And he gives bread to the eater. Stop doubting that God won't give you seed to sow. He'll give you seed that eventually will be so much it's like the stars of the heaven. 
and he'll give you seed like it's a sand on the seashore. When I look back to when I started my walk with God, I tell you, for me to give a hundred rand or two hundred rand would have been a big thing. Rand would have been a mega thing. My friend, I have given up to a million rand as God has told me to do it because it's so powerful. Now, if I measure where I came from, you could throw a million rand one time like that. I mean, I would, I would stutter. I would fall down. I wouldn't believe it. But you see, there's a process. As you walk with God, as it gets greater, you find God gives you more seed and more seed and more seed. And your place is never to eat the seed that God gives you to sow. Never be unfaithful with your tithes. And so you're faithful with your tithes. You're faithful with the seed that you're sowing. And you'll find that your seed is multiplied. You're able to give more and give more, and give more, till you're astounded at how much seed you can sow. And then the seasons will overlap for you. Christmas is the incarnation of God. God made flesh, born to die. We celebrate God's love gift for humanity. God himself is the gift. Now God is born within us. We have still so much potential within us to be released, to glorify Christ and God our Father. Potential is not what you've done or who you are. Potential is what you have not done but still can do. Potential is not what you are but what you still can become with your life. You've got to come out of your tent like Abram and look at the stars, look at creation, look at the magnitude of creation and understand that creation was created for you and you are more valuable to God than creation. And your potential is equivalent to the potential of God. I want to repeat that. Your potential is equivalent to the potential of God because God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. You have limitless potential in your life in Jesus' name. And all this is because of God's greatest gift, Jesus Christ, the gift that keeps on giving, the gift of God's Son, the gift of God Himself to a fallen race. Merry Christmas to every one of you, 2020. This is the greatest blessing and miracle of God, the great gift of Jesus Christ that gives you potential that is limitless in the mighty name of Jesus. If you receive the Word of God, will you stand up and give Him a big shout? In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. Allow me to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone in the meeting here today. When we say, Merry Christmas, let it not be a cliche, but let it be understanding that we can be merry because of this gift that has been given to us the great gift of God himself to give us potential to release into a dark, dark world in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, we celebrate your birthday and we say happy birthday to you, Lord Jesus, and that your gift to be born into humanity is something that astounds us, Lord Jesus. Help us never to take these precious truths for granted, Lord. Help us, Lord, to value them, to honor you, Lord Jesus, with our lives. Help us most of all to believe in you, Lord. Man once said, Lord Jesus, I believe, help thou my unbelief. I pray you'll help people's unbelief, Lord, where they struggle with these things that I preach 
to believe that they can be a reality in their lives. In the name of Jesus, turn that unbelief around, Lord, and let it be a foundation of faith and a foundation of believing in Jesus Christ's wonderful name. God bless you, church. Merry Christmas. Have a peaceful day tomorrow with your family. Bye-bye.